Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Mormonism with the Murph. Mormonism with the Murph, where we do a fair and objective analysis of the church and its truth claims, its history, doctrine, and policy. So if you weren't aware, in 2015, the church publicly released and announced to the world Joseph Smith's seer stone, which he possessed in his youth and used in folk magic, treasure digging, and the Book of Mormon translation. The church also brought out an essay, Joseph the Seer, as well as a Gospel Topics essay, Book of Mormon Translation, which I'll link in the description. They acknowledge in the essay the Smiths family's engagement and immersion in this magic folklore culture and worldview. It was common for people in Joseph's environment to believe in magic and that God could communicate through physical objects, including seer stones or divining rods, just like in the Bible, such as Aaron and his rod. Stones and defining rods were common objects used in Joseph Smith's time, often to locate water, find lost objects, or bury treasure. This magical worldview could be described as a pseudo-scientific understanding for how the world worked. Lucy Smith, Joseph's mother, acknowledged in her history the family's involvement and immersion in magic rituals, soothsayings, and the faculty of Abrak. Rather than viewing their engagement in folk magic and treasure digging as black magic, or worshipping an evil source, many early Christians were engaged in folk magic, blending magic, spirits, angels, and Christianity all together as they're all invisible forces. However, Joseph did not emphasize in his history his earlier involvement in magic and treasure digging, perhaps because it came across superstitious and perhaps inappropriate to new religious converts. However, Joseph and his followers still believed that seeing in stones was a gift from God. Folk magic and treasure digging, though, was a common folk practice of Joseph's culture, and historian Richard Bushman even stated that it was respectable and compared it to buying a lottery ticket or gambling in our modern, modern day. Many people believed in the 19th century in frontier America in enchanted treasure buried in the ground guarded by spirits. This may sound superstitious and odd to our modern ears. Some, like Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers, claimed that money diggers who believed in enchanted guarded treasure were foolish and engaged in a vain pursuit, often neglecting their homes, families, and their business, in a vain pursuit after buried treasure guarded by spirits. Then when the treasure dig would fail or something went wrong in the ritual, they would then conclude that some mistake happened and the treasure slipped away. This folklore comes from the tales of Captain Kidd, a pirate who is believed to have buried Spanish gold and silver around upstate New York. Some of the Smith's neighbours also claim that Joseph was a fan of Captain Kidd's stories growing up, and often the spirit guardian was a Native American who died with the treasure and was guarding over it. One can see the similarities and connections to the angel and gold plate story, Moroni who was a Nephi and Native American guarding over the gold plates, and Joseph trying to obtain it. Also Moroni appearing to Joseph three times in one night is another magical element. So you might be wondering, when did Joseph Smith obtain his seer stone, and were there other people claiming to see in a stone? So Joseph Smith possessed multiple seer stones. One account states he found his first seer stone by looking into the stone of another seer, Sally Chase, one of the Smith's neighbours, and seeing a stone under a tree by Lake Erie between 1819 to 1820. His second seer stone, the one he used for the translation of the Book of Mormon, he found when digging a well on the Willard Chase property in 1822. Historian Michael Quinn states that there were others in Joseph's Palmyra and Manchester area who possessed a seer stone, such as Sally Chase, William Stafford, and Chauncey Hart. They claimed to see things not visible to the natural eye, including lost objects and buried treasure. Many people believe that Joseph had this gift to see and find lost objects, this included his mother Lucy, his father Joseph Smith Sr., Martin Harris, who claimed uh, and spoke of an occasion of losing a pin in straw, and Joseph placing his face in his hat found the pin. Elder Stephen Snow states that Joseph Smith in Palmyra and Manchester had a reputation for being able to find lost objects and was hired as a treasure seer between 1823 to 1825 before he went to work for Josiah Stoll. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at Joseph Smith's involvement in treasure digging and what was involved in their treasure digging expeditions. And we'll have a look at him working for Josiah Stoll in the 1826 Glass Looker trial, where Joseph Smith was taken to court by Josiah Stoll's nephew on charges of being a disorderly person and pretending to see in the stone. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment underneath, share this with other people. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any content that I have coming your way. And you can support me by donating to my PayPal, stephen.murphy1996 at outlook.com. And I will see you all in the next episode. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.